Hi, so hello everyone, it's Bon and welcome back to my channel. Happy Valentine's Day and Happy Lunar New Year. Um, yeah, so it's the weekend and I wanted to do something for my YouTube channel. However, it is minus 20 outside and while it is sunny, well, as you can see here, while it is very sunny, it's minus 20 and ooh, like I can feel the cold right now. Like, nope. Anyways, yeah, since it's super cold outside and I just wanted to stay in, um, I thought I would just like kind of chill at home and maybe show some old photos that I've taken and talk about my thought process and how I took them. And I don't know, maybe that would be cool. <laughs> um, yeah, but if you're interested with that, then stick in and I'll see you around. Also, in the past month or so, I've been ordering a bunch of camera off eBay. Um, as you can see here, I have the Yashica MF1, I believe, and this Kodak M35. I actually also ordered the Kodak M38, so I'm waiting on that. Um, but basically, these two are plastic cameras, and I thought maybe I would test them and see how they compare to my show camera, like the one from Double Film and Lomography Simple Use Camera, right? But I also have gotten these nice range finders over here. So this one is the Konica 3A, um, which is a range finder. It's fixed lens from the 1950s. And this one, of course, is the Contax TV-S, um, which it is a little bit expensive, but still not as expensive as the Contax T2. Um, and yeah, so I actually had this for like over a month now, but I still haven't gone out to use it because like I said, it's, it's always been like in the minus 20s outside for the past two weeks or so. And since this one is like an electronic camera, I didn't really want to go out with it in that friggin' weather because I don't want to break it. You know yeah so i guess that's one of the downside of getting like an expensive camera or like rather an expensive old camera because you start feeling too precious about it and then you don't go out and misha no you're not going out in that weather no we're staying in Oh my gosh. Anyways, as I was saying, if you start feeling too precious about your camera gear, then you know you won't really be using it to its full potential because you wouldn't want to be going out with them. And that's the whole point of having them, right? Like you want to go out and actually take photos um, with them without feeling like you have to be too careful with using them, right? Oh my gosh, this cat. What are you doing? <laughs> this cat has been like, I don't know, ruining my train of thought. Um, but yeah, anyways, I guess let's just go and start looking at my old photos. Uh, maybe you'd like it. Um, I don't know, but yeah. Okay, so we're here at the table now. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of these old photos that I've taken. For this video, I wanted to share some photos that I took in downtown Calgary using a roll of Cinestill 800T. So if you're not familiar with Cinestill 800T, it's basically a modified version of Kodak Vision 500, which is a cinematic film stock typically used for recording movies back in the day. So the T in 800T stands for tungsten because this film is tungsten balanced. And this is basically a type of artificial indoor lighting that was used in studios um, back in the day. Now, tungsten light is warmer than daylight, which is what most films are normally balanced for. So tungsten balance films render colors with a cooler bluish tone to offset the warmth of tungsten light. Now, I don't want to be too technical about this, 
but Kodak Vision 500 is normally developed using ECN chemicals, which are not readily available in most photo labs. So what Cinestill does is they modify Kodak Vision 500 by removing its Remjet layer, uh, making it okay to process with more common C41 chemicals. Um, but while this makes the film easier to process, this causes the film to get these halations around strong lights. And some people like this, some people don't. I personally like it for what I use Cinestill for, um, which is nighttime architecture shots. So without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at some of these photos that I've taken, shall we? Okay, so this one here is the first photo in the roll. Um, yeah, as you can see in here, there's these major light leaks. Um, and this is the same for a couple more shots. Um, and this is like the second roll of Cinestill 800T that I've used so far that had light leaks in the first few um, shots. I don't think that this is from my camera. I actually think that this is kind of like a production error on Cinestill's part. So, you know, like when you try to modify the film by removing a Sremjet layer, you might introduce things such as light leaks in the process, which is, I don't know how I feel about it. It's not cool because, you know, I feel like, you know, having these light leaks that weren't caused by my equipment is just kind of annoying. Anyway, for this photo, I wanted to take this because I thought this, um, curvature of the bridge contrasts really well with the strong lines of the buildings and the Calgary Tower. Um, and I kind of just like it how the curve goes from the top left corner towards the right side and yeah. And then there's this photo of a bridge here, nothing really special. It's just kind of symmetric, so yeah. For this next photo, I actually really liked it because I like the juxtaposition of this Orthodox Church and this cyclist over here. What I think I don't like about this photo is again this light leak that was introduced by the film. Not cool. Uh, for this shot, I made this composition because I thought um, it's nice to have kind of like this frame within a frame type of composition. So I wanted to frame the public library, which is here in the middle, using these um, traffic lights, as well as this chimney, I guess, over here. Um, yeah, I also waited until the lights were red, so I got that um, red light halation, which I think adds more color to the composition. Okay, so for this next shot, I wanted to have like a longer exposure to add some movement into the photo. Um, and as you can see in here, these people who are kind of walking over here are blurred because my, I think my shutter speed was around one eighth of a second around this time. I just wasn't able to get a slower shutter speed yet because I think I took this around four o'clock p.m., which means it, the sun hasn't set yet, so there's quite a lot of ambient light, um, so I didn't want the film to kind of blow out. Um, so yeah, this is what I got. So for this next shot, I waited a bit longer so I can get like a slower shutter speed, um, and I waited for this train to kind of come by and took that shot, and I think this is really nice. Uh, I love it. So this next shot is like a variation of the previous one, but instead of just waiting for one train, I waited for two trains to pass by, and this is the result. Um, it's kind of okay. However, I think what's happening in here is that it's a little bit right heavy. I think it would have been better if I waited for the train to be on this side, which is like on the left side of the frame. Um, so then the trains are kind of like moving towards each other into the middle. I think that would have made for a better composition. 
So for this photo, I was on the platform waiting for trains to pass by. Um, and this is the first shot that I took. And I think it doesn't work because the shutter speed was too fast, I think. So for this next photo, I decided to take a longer exposure. Um, but I think this time the shutter speed was too slow. So what happened in here is that the train just kind of got turned into this mush that's speeding towards the left left hand side of the photo, um, which is not as good, I think. Okay, so this photo I actually really like because there's a lot of these kind of like crisscrossing um, leading lines that leads your eye into the middle of the photo. Uh, this one is just like a basic photo of the Calgary Tower. Um, and I was just like playing with the buildings in here, like the positioning of the buildings to create some interest. Okay, so this photo of the Jack Singer Hall entrance is a good example of what I like to use Cinestill 800 T for, and that is architectural shots that have interesting lighting. Because um, I think the bluish tint of the tungsten-based film is juxtaposes really well with these um, warm lights um, that comes out of the halations, right? So I think that's pretty cool. Um, also, when I was taking these photos, I actually added a... Come on. So when I was taking these photos, I also had a one-fourth strength uh, black pro mist uh, filter on my lens, um, which strengthened uh, the halations a little bit more, so yeah. Okay, so for this next shot, I basically went back to that previous spot where I was earlier in the day. And this time it's really after sunset, so it's during the blue hour. And as you can see, there's a lot more interest in these photos because these lights are all turned on and I can basically take longer shutter speeds, which is cool. Um, I think a shorter shutter speed was like nicer though compared to this one which was longer um, because again longer shutter speeds turn the train into like this blob of color which I don't really like however if I take it just a little bit shorter uh, or faster then I end up with this kind of like short motion blur on the train um, which I think is nicer than the blob that I get with the other one. Okay, so this one here, I was kind of walking around um, the train stations and there's this entrance that was just really bright orange. Um, like the light inside of it was like bright orange. So I thought it's a nice shot, so I took it and I don't know, I guess it's okay. Okay, so this next shot here is a photo of um, this kind of like sculpture underneath the bow tower. Um, and yeah, I was just basically waiting for cars and buses to pass by to kind of like create some more interest in the photo. Um, yeah, I think it's, it turned out okay, I think. So this one is another one that I took. Um, so this photo in here is a photo of a pay station over at a parking lot um, and I thought it was just really cool because when I was passing by it was like this red color that really grabbed my attention so I thought it would be cool to take a photo with Cinestill and I think it's okay. So as I was doing my photo walk I walked towards the Chinatown section of downtown Calgary and that's because I wanted to take a photo of the Silver Dragon restaurant, which is kind of like an iconic building here in Calgary now, um, because it has all of these like red neon signs, which is super cool. 
um, and I wasn't disappointed because look at this photo, I think it's super nice. And some more shots of Chinatown. Okay, so around the time that I was taking this photo, um, I actually had my uh, camera on a tripod that's about four feet high and I wasn't really like being careful about it. So what happened was that I kind of placed the tripod in this lopsided part of the um, the pavement and you know like I let go of it for a second and it fell. So my camera fell kind of like lens first into the ground from four feet high and um, yeah, it kind of broke the lens and I thought the camera still worked because I was still able to take this next shot of it using a different lens. Um, however, once I got home and I was, you know, checking the, the camera for defects and stuff, I found out that it started to kind of malfunction, like the, the shutter speed sometimes is like wonky. Um, so yeah, I basically broke a camera. Um, I broke my favorite camera this night that I was taking these photos, which is kind of a pity. Um, so yeah. Yeah, so this basically brings me to the end of the photos that I wanted to share. Um, I hope you liked it and I hope that maybe you got something from this type of video where I'm talking more about how I was making my compositions and stuff. Um, yeah, I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. But anyways, again, thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Maybe subscribe if you haven't yet. And I will see you all in the next video. Cheers! Hi, Nisha. I'm I'm taking a video. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Okay. So this photo of the. <laughs>